Hey, what's up Chemical Guy family and welcome back to a brand new episode of Chemical Guy's Detail Garage. Today in the shop we have this 2005 Honda Accord. Now this Honda has seen better days, but don't worry, we're going to get it back to looking as great as new as soon as possible. So make sure to stay tuned, we're going to do a complete transformation on this car right now. All right guys, so first things first, we tackled the wash. So we wanted to get the vehicle clean in preparation for polishing. So the first thing that we did was we cleaned the wheels, we deep cleaned them, even though we're not gonna polish the wheels, we just wanted to make sure that those are clean. And then we proceeded to the wash itself. So we decided to wash the vehicle using our citrus washing gloss soap, paired with our Torque Big Mouth Max Release Foam Cannon and the two bucket method. Now we're using all this because we wanna make sure that we thoroughly clean the vehicle. And when I use the citrus washing gloss, you can actually use it in concentrations of three ounces or more to strip away any kind of protective coatings like waxes, sealants, and glazes. And that's exactly what we did. So we used three ounces of citrus washing gloss, gave it a deep clean, pulled it inside the bay, dried it, and now we're here and ready to go. So now that we're ready to go, let's get started. All right guys, so first things first, before we do anything on the vehicle, we gotta take a look at it. So now that that vehicle is all clean, it's dried, it's pulled into the bay, we can inspect it with our LED inspection lights and figure out what's going on with the paint. Now right here on the hood and the front end of the vehicle, I can tell you that there's a lot of oxidation, there's a lot of embedded contaminants, there's a lot of scratches, fine swirls, and that's exactly what we want to tackle today. So the first thing that we're going to do before we get into any kind of polishing is clay bar decontamination. So the clay bar today that we're going to be using is our OG clay bar, which is a mixture between a light and a medium. So it gives you a nice blend between, you know, a very light clay bar. So if your vehicle isn't as contaminated, you can go ahead and quickly clay bar your vehicle if it's on the newer side or if it's on the more well-maintained side. And we also have that nice balance. So even if this vehicle were to be on the more contaminated side, it is a blend between the light and the medium. So we have that stickiness to pull off those embedded contaminants. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and then I'm gonna pull out my clay bar here. All right, so now that I pulled it out, you do not want to use this entire piece of clay bar for your vehicle. What you want to do instead is actually cut about a fourth of this clay bar off instead of using the entire thing. And this thing is extremely stretchy, so 
cut off a little chunk and then put that back into your packaging. Now, the reason that you wanna use a small piece of clay bar at a time is because if you were to drop the entire thing, you would have no more clay bar to finish off the rest of your vehicle. Also, it's a big waste of product because you do not need that entire piece. Use pieces of it at a time. So I'm using a very small piece that I can knead with my four fingers. And the reason for it is because if I were to drop it on the ground, it'd be useless. It'd pick up all kinds of micro bases from the ground, like dirt, grime, possibly little rocks as well. And if you put that on your paint, you're gonna scratch it up. So now that you have your piece of clay bar, you can knead it around to however you'd like. Then once you're ready to go, you can go ahead and start claying. But before you do that, grab yourself some clay luber. Now with clay luber, it's gonna lubricate the surface so that you can easily glide the clay bar on the surface for that ultimate slickness. So right now, all you wanna do is start spraying on the surface of the vehicle and then start gliding your clay bar from left to right. All right, so once you spray a nice section of the vehicle that you're gonna be working in, simply grab your clay bar and glide it left to right. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the paint gets, uh, it feels kind of rough when you first start, but as you start claying the surface of the vehicle, it's gonna start getting smoother and smoother. And then once it feels glass smooth and you don't feel any kind of resistance on your clay bar, then that's when you can grab your microfiber towel, wipe off the excess of the clay luber that's on the surface and continue with this next section of your vehicle. Right here, I'm focusing on the hood, so I'm just making sure that I get this entire side of the hood, and then I'll wipe it down and then proceed to the other side as well. And then whenever you clean, do, you don't have to put any heavy pressure onto the clay bar. All you have to do is simply put the palm of your hand or your forefingers on there and simply guide it left and right. You don't have to go crazy in terms of, you know, pushing down on it to make sure that you get rid of all the contamination. The clay bar will do it for you. And another thing as well is you just want to do that crosshatch motion. So you'll see me right here repeatedly going up and down and left and right. You don't want to do any kind of circular motions because if you were to have, if you happen to get anything caught on your clay bar, such as a, a rock or any kind of little debris, it can potentially mimic that swirl motion all over your vehicle. All right guys, and then once you are all done cleaning a certain section of the vehicle, grab your clay bar. I like to put it back in the packaging just so I don't um, drop it. Grab yourself a microfiber towel and then continue with wiping down the excess of the clay luber that's on the surface. And what you'll feel right now when you're wiping it down, it's glass smooth. You shouldn't have any resistance while you're wiping it. If you do feel it's still a little bit rough, go back reclay it to ensure that there's absolutely nothing on the surface on there before you get into your polishing because this is what you want to do you want to prep the surface for polishing and this is the preparation needed in order to do so so you want to make sure that there's absolutely nothing on the paint which can damage or interfere with your polishing results because if you still have contaminants that are sitting in your paint it gets on your pad and then you're just going to be scratching the rest of your vehicle All right guys, so now that I'm done with this little section, what I'm gonna do right now is actually finish clean the rest of the hood. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tape line down the middle of the hood. And then we're gonna do a 50-50 of what a corrected side looks like versus an uncorrected side. All right guys, so now that we are done playing and preparing the hood, we've taped it off and now we're ready to start polishing. So the products that we're gonna be using today is gonna to be our C4 compound and P4 polish. Now we're using this combination of products because our C4 compound is gonna take care of the heavier defects such as the scratches, the swirls, the oxidation, the water spots, and any other stains and films that are on the paint. And then we're gonna follow up with our P4 polish, which is gonna be more of a finer polish. So this is gonna be more to refine the paint, bring out the clarity, bring out the shine, bring out that mirror reflection, and just kind of top it off and get it ready for our protective coatings. So the machine that we're gonna be using today is actually our Torque 10FX, which we have right here. We have it paired with a five inch backing plate. And then the first pad that I'm gonna be using today is actually gonna be an orange pad. Now the orange pad is a cutting pad, so it pairs perfectly well with a compound, a cutting agent. Now you can use it with 
P4, but that'll give you more of a mild cut. If you use it with C4, you'll achieve a nice deeper cut. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my machine, and then I'm gonna put the backing plate on it as evenly as I can. Press down on it to ensure it's nice and on there. And then we're gonna grab our C4 compound first. I'll move this out the way so that you guys can see. C4 compound, what you wanna do is for an area like this, for like about half of the hood, I'm gonna uh, put about five drops, and then you can also add more if necessary while you're polishing it. Well, it's a big drop, so I'll probably do four more. One, two, three, four. Set that down. Then what you wanna do as well is grab some polishing pad conditioner. This goes a long way in your polishing technique. So this is gonna help uh, keep your pad cool, help it from not building up too much heat, which is gonna help you reduce the chance of burning the paint. And it's also gonna make sure that your pads last their longest. And all you have to do, is that it. Give it a spray, you're good to go. Grab your machine, make your way to the panel, and then we can start polishing. All right guys, so now that we are right here at our panel and we have our product, our machine, and everything ready to go, what you wanna do now is blot it out in the section that you're gonna be working in. In my case, I'm gonna be working in this little, I guess, corner of the hood. So I'm gonna be worried about this little section right here. So what I'll do is I'll blot out the product in the area that I wanna do. Now, once you blot it out evenly, then you wanna turn on your DA polisher to speed setting one and just give that a nice little work so that you can evenly distribute it on the surface that you're gonna be working on. All right, now once you spread out the product in the area that you're gonna be working in, all you wanna do now is start at a starting point. So I'm gonna make this my starting point, and from here I'm gonna go up, down, left and right, right linear motion, about two passes, and then I'm gonna come back, wipe it off, inspect the results, and then we can figure out whether or not we need to go uh, give it another pass with the C4, or just finish it off with P4. All right guys, now, now that we've finished that little section, I'm gonna set my machine down, grab myself a microfiber towel, wipe off the product, and then I'm gonna inspect the results. All right guys, so we just finished doing this top half of this half of the hood. As you guys can see, it definitely looks much better already. There's more depth, there's more shine. You can actually tell now that this car is not actually just black. It actually has a nice blue metallic flake within the paint. So it looks great, it looks much better than it was. And now we're gonna go ahead and finish using uh, the C4 compound on this side of the hood. That way we can move on to P4. So right now I'm gonna finish this off and I'll be right back with you guys for that P4.
All right, guys, so now that I'm done wiping off the C4 after doing that bottom piece, now it's time to move on to doing our P4. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take off the orange pad from my machine and replace it with the white hex logic polishing pad. Same thing, we're gonna grab our P4 polish, we're gonna shake it up. Then we're gonna put about five drops onto our pad here. And once that's done, you can add some pad conditioner to your pad. Very light amount since we're just polishing, we're not creating too much heat. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with our C4 compound. So we're gonna blot it out, speed setting one, spread it out, and then we're gonna do this top half, and then we're gonna to proceed to doing the bottom half. All right guys, so now that we're completely done working this side of the hood, I'm gonna take off the tape and so we can check out our results. Sheesh. All right guys, so right off the bat, you can definitely tell that this right side that we polished looks way better. It has much more depth, much more clarity. It has a deeper, bolder look. And nonetheless, the scratches on this side are non-existent. All you have is that pure, deep reflection and shine. All right guys, so we just finished polishing this side of the hood and this thing looks better than you. Now, one thing I do wanna point out for you guys, I know you guys might be asking in the comment section right now is, what are all those little spots left on the paint? Well, this car was actually repainted from the front end, so that's why you'll see a lot of little fish eyes right here in the paint. Unfortunately, that's something that we cannot fix. Nonetheless, the paint looks much better than what it was and I would take this side right here any day as opposed to the side that we have not corrected. So huge, huge results. It looks much better. And overall, I'm satisfied with the results that we achieved. Now, some other things that I do wanna point out as well is you might be seeing on the very top right here, the paint unfortunately is failing. I'm not really too concerned about that because this can easily be repainted or even wrapped for the matter. There's a ton of things that can be done there, but the rest of the vehicle has huge potential and that's why we're gonna continue doing it right now. So right now what we're gonna do is finish off the rest of the vehicle using our C4-P4 combo and polish this paint to perfection. And then once we polish this paint to perfection, then we're gonna go ahead and layer some protectants on there. Now the first thing that I'm actually gonna apply to the paint is gonna be our black light glaze. Now black light glaze is a fun, fast and easy way to add tons of depth to your vehicle and it's extremely easy to use. If you guys have ever used a carnauba wax, like butter wet wax, it's as easy as applying that. The only difference with black light glaze is that you wanna let that sit because it contains micro fillers that you wanna give some time, up to 15 minutes. After applying black light glaze, then we're gonna go ahead and seal that. So we're gonna be applying our jet seal, which is a paint sealant. You can actually apply it to paint glass as well. You can apply it to virtually all smooth glossy surfaces on the exterior of your vehicle. So paint, glass, wheels, headlights, tail lights, chrome, metal, you name it. It works on virtually all your smooth glossy exterior surfaces. And what it does is it creates a durable synthetic layer of protection 
on top of your vehicle. So that's gonna last you up to 12 months of protection and that's gonna shield your paint from fading, discoloration, water spots, and much more. So it creates a super durable, slick layer of protection on your vehicle that's gonna repel not only contaminants from sticking, keeping your car cleaner for longer, but as well as harsh UV rays from damaging your paint. It also has synthetic gloss enhancers, which give your ride a nice, deep, durable shine as well. And then lastly, after we apply our jet seal, same thing with that. You wanna let that one sit like black light glaze for anywhere from about 15 to 20 minutes and then wipe it off. And then to top it off, we're gonna hit it with some Lucent spray shine. Now Lucent is a quick and easy way to add instant shine and depth to your paint. Now we're using this as a topper for all these products that we use on our vehicle. We can use this one in between washes, right after a wash, or even right now as we're doing this whole process on this Accord. Lucent spray shine is a great product to keep in your detailing art because it's gonna clean up light things on your vehicle like dirt, dust, debris, fingerprints, bird droppings, and much more while adding some shine and protection to your vehicle. So on top of all the products that we're using today, this is also gonna act as that final cherry on top to just give it that perfect touch. Now to apply black light glaze, you can apply it by hand or by machine. In this case, we're gonna use the same machine that we used in this video, which was our Torque 10 FX, which is a DA polisher. However, we're gonna swap out the pad for a more softer pad because these products don't have any cut. This is more so for the application. So in this case, we're gonna be using our blue finishing pad, which pairs perfectly well for applying glazes to your vehicle via machine. And then for the jet seal, we're gonna be applying it with one of our black finishing pads, which is an ultra soft finishing pad, perfect for applying sealants and waxes to your paint. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the video right here. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a huge like. Subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you are aware of all of our newest videos. And lastly, if you guys wanna pick up any of the products, I'm talking about any of them that you've seen on the video today, you can pick them up directly on our website, chemicalguides.com. All the links to them are in the description down below as well. As always, my name is Joey. This is Chemical Guys Detail Garage. I'll see you guys next time.